Hello, my name is Renee L. Rose. I'm the founder of Explore Art Talk. With Explore Art, our featured guests, we have meaningful conversations celebrating artistic and cultural diversity that makes our world extraordinary. So sit back, relax, and check out our content. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Colin. I am so sorry. I messed up the um the I made it invalid. I did something wrong on Zoom that I never do. So I had to hurry up and cancel that and send you a new um invite. Oh, I'm glad you're really good with computers because some people would have been going crazy. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I was kind of like uh zoom i don't i i think i've done this one time and oh, really I'm, like, I'm gonna be completely ill prepared i've been like playing with my camera to make sure everything was working it's there so, and cleaned everything up. so i i hope i got the lighting right and everything's good to go it's perfect the colors are looking beautiful thank you yeah that's this is my that's my living room oh it is yeah so that's my fireplace back there Oh, it looks like tree. a studio. I love it. This is this is kind of how I I live. Uh, I got some I got artwork everywhere. I love it. I love it. At least you got a Christmas tree up. I didn't even put up a Christmas tree. I, you know, and I was. We waited till like the week and a half before, and now oh, I'm like, man. I don't know, February. I think I'll get a chance. <laughs> If I if I get to it, you know, I got a lot of shows coming up right now, so I'm. Kind of like some people, when you drive past neighborhoods, they just keep the decorations up all year. I got neighbors like that. Yeah, I'm about to put like strip lights up, so I don't have to change them out each year because it's a uh, it's a real but headache. Some, so many people did that. Some villages and townships pass ordinance that you have to take it down, otherwise you get fined. <laughs> we have this is like a. Uh, this is a mid-century modern flat roof house. So oh, what I was thinking about doing, you know, those like the strip lights where oh. it's like, so I was going to put it right up under the lip of the house and then it could go like white, pink, blue, red, whatever changes for the season. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, for Valentine's mean, Day. Mean, yeah, right. And then just turn it off when I need to, you know? Yeah. Oh, smart. Very artistic. I plan things. <laughs> So, why don't you start off, Colin, telling me about, I've read everything about you, but I want people to hear about your background as an artist. How did you start getting into art? I know, obviously, your dad and your granddad is it. You have a lot of influence. So, let's talk about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, for the longest, I mean, my entire life has been uh surrounded by art um it's kind of like you know it, my dad says you became an artist when you were like four or five years old when you sold your first piece and when an artist sells their first piece that's kind of like the go into it um so he says i was an artist before he was because of that sale uh it was a painting of pocahontas that i made when i was like four or five um but like, I mean, my grandfather on my dad's side, my mother's dad was an artist. Uh, she just acquired one of his pieces recently. Um, my yeah. sister's an interior designer. Uh, I mean, it's it's like every aspect of my life has been saturated with art since like childhood. Um, but there was never like this like push for me to be an artist. It was always my choice. Uh, so I partied pretty heavily. Uh, in my youth and then when I was like right around 21 I kind of decided you know like I was working for corporate America doing the sales businesses and things like that and I said this just isn't the lifestyle I want to live anymore um, all throughout high school I had created artwork and everything like that I made a couple uh, like first prize awards and things like that but I never took it like that was going to be my calling in life um, 
but once I hit college and kind of was like done partying, it was like game on, we're going. And uh, I went down to Miami uh, just to kind of visit. Um, and as soon as I, I I went down the day that the Heat won uh, the the championships to oh. visit the school, so the school was three blocks from the championship stadium or the the Heat stadium. And I'm going to visit the school when the school's let out. But it was like this celebration of art and life and culture and all this stuff going on. And it was like, I got to be down here. So when I went down there, uh, I went down as one artist and walked out a completely different, open-minded, like, oh wow, bending, uh, doing all kinds of different stuff. Oh, wow. Did you get a fine arts degree when you're in college or something else? I, so my college education kind of goes when I, right as I graduated high school, I went to work, I went to school with my father. Uh, I saw this opportunity. He was a teacher. So it was like kind of free tuition away or discounted tuition. Um, I didn't do very well. I partied. Uh, I kind of withdrew from classes. I don't say fail, but I didn't do very well. Um, uh, I focused more on parties and girls and I met my wife at that time. Um, and then it was like, you know, we're going to go back into like business and selling. And then I went down to Miami. I got my bachelor's from university of, or I'm sorry, from Miami Dade College and New World School of the Arts yeah. in affiliation with the University of Florida. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I graduated uh, with summa cum laude, uh, high honors, and then went right into the master's program at University of Miami uh, with a full tuition uh, stipend and a TA position. So I started doing uh, teacher assistant work and was teaching for a couple of oh. years there. Uh, wild, wild experience. Fascinating. How do you, what do you think about the Miami um, art scene? It's quite different from here. You know, honestly, right now, I could not tell you what the art scene is. Um, oh. So it's wild. I just saw a post on Instagram like two and a half weeks ago from uh, Only in Dade, which is like a Dade Instagram account. And they were talking about Wynwood. So when I went to Miami, Wynwood was kind of like this warehouse district. We had Wynwood, we had design district, we had uh, mm -hmm. kind of in between downtown. Um, I was in uh, New World School of the Arts, which ended up getting a gallery in uh, Wynwood called Art Scene. And from 2008 to 2014, is when I was in that scene. Uh, but by the end of 2014, that scene, the Winwood scene had kind of not so much diminished, but grew exponentially Yeah, to the point cool. where like a lot of galleries had to move out. Um, I know the gallery that I was being represented by uh, at the end, his one gallery, it was like 5,000, 6,000 square feet. Um, he said that his rent was 18,000 a month and they were bumping him to 24,000 a month I believe it. for because art sales. A hot district now because Basel, our Basel with UBS and Miami government poured ton millions of dollars exactly. to develop the whole exactly. it matter. They did that. They developed the art scene, but it did displace a lot of artists because that is the spot well, what was funny is we displaced all the all the warehouse districts so yeah we were, there was like all these empty warehouses and then there was like well hey you know we can take over these spaces so they gave all these spaces for really low rent right in the beginning and then we kind of gentrified this area blew it up it's over. i mean the, the i remember i wow the first, that's interesting well, the first week that I was there, I'm going to my, who was my undergraduate professor, Fred Snitzer's gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, I found, I was looking for his gallery. I found a cop on the side of the street. I was driving a uh, Del Sol, which is a, a target top. The roof comes off of the car. 
I had the roof off. I'm driving through this neighborhood. I pull over to a cop. I say, I'm looking for this gallery. He says, do you value your life? And I said, yeah, what do you mean? He says, get out of here. You could die. Like, this is a dangerous area. Uh, one of those guys I knew got hit by a car and left for dead sitting outside. He, like, split his head open at 4 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Uh, I actually have some of his artwork back there. Um, dangerous area. But then by the end of it, it was like. Oh, yeah. It was like yeah, a photo. I saw that beautiful graffiti art and murals. Absolutely. I mean, it's like a tourist attraction. Yeah, absolutely. Around the country. It's just amazing. So now it's like, I feel like it's gotten too saturated, but I haven't been there in five years. Uh, so, you know, the last time I went, I went to my old apartment area or my old house area and they had completely built up all these apartment complexes all around it. Uh, so it's like every two years, I feel like Miami is going through changes, renovations, upgrading, uh, the last time I was there, I didn't even recognize the city that I had grown up for like 10 years. They've, in, you know, They've displaced a lot of people and it's high end. It's high end. It's very high end. What do you think about, um, so you definitely see a difference between that and, and the Illinois area. You know, Illinois, it's, it's night and day. I mean, it really is night and day. Uh, I don't do, you know, I'm out here in the suburbs of Chicago. It's, for me to get out into the galleries, I know I'm I'm like making excuses, but it's pretty difficult. I was downtown in Miami, so it was like hop on that scooter, ride over. Uh seven months out of the year, I can't get on a scooter or anything here. It's too too cold. Um and then when you go out to the city, it's like you know, you're going you park here and then you gotta bounce over there and you gotta go there, this, there, and the other. Um it's different. It's it's a totally different scene. Yeah. So you left Miami and what did you do after that? You came back to Illinois? I came back here. Uh, okay. you know, I was I was searching. I was kind of searching, you know, it was like I got a master's degree. A lot of time like the final year of my master's degree, they were like, What do you want the master's degree for? Me being young and naive, I kind of thought it was going to provide me all these opportunities for jobs and stuff like that. Uh, boiled down to it, it was like, you're going to get teaching jobs and things like that. And I came up, there was a lot of opportunity for teaching positions here. Um, but things happen with bureaucracy in Illinois and this credentialing system happened and took place. So uh, I kind of pursued teaching in the beginning. Uh, after a few years of just applying and applying and applying and getting rejected because they said I had zero experience teaching and I'm like trying to get experience teaching and they won't let me teach without having experience. I just said, I, I, yeah, I, I like think I'm too young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'm too young. I need to have more experience. So I just focused on making art. Um, I opened a business with me and my wife. We do dog grooming here at the house um and then i just make art i'm i'm like i work in the morning with my wife on dog grooming and then in the evenings i'm working on art and it's just art so where do you since you've been back here where do you do exhibits where do you do you how do you exhibit your art what do you do right now i currently am in a artist collective um with water street studios out in batavia illinois mm -hmm. uh there's about 24 of us in, involved in the group. Uh, I believe that I am the youngest in the group. Um, and my father might be one of the older gentlemen in the group. So my father and um, one of the other partners over there founded uh, the collective um, and then asked me to join immediately. And it was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm always willing to show. Um, we currently have an exhibition coming up next month at Water Street Studios. Um, I'm getting prepped for it. I'm actually doing uh, a ready-mades um, for this exhibition. So everything that I normally do is like very high-end, detailed, uh, meticulous, crafted. Um, 
and then I'm doing like weird things like I'm I'm putting in these which posting notes. Are, these are post-it notes, but they're colored pencils. Oh yeah. So it's gonna be called post-it. Um but they're all just blank white pieces of paper colored pencil to post-it note colors. So it's just a simple it's an installation. It's a simple like conceptual installation. Uh -huh. um, and then I've got a PC world I the guess, yeah. edition um, from 2010. Uh, I've got a whole stack of those. So I'm going to put those out with some reading glasses um, and just like a shitty commentary. Oh, pardon my language on, hey. uh, you know, being a visually inept artist and then dealing with the blind and like how that whole world kind of comes together. And it's like, it's, it's, I've, I've just watched this uh, amazing race and there was a deaf guy on there. And I started thinking about these other things. Like I need to learn sign language. I, I feel like as a human being, I should learn sign language um, and like Braille and like, being a visually inept guy, I kind of shifted subjects there, but um, I was thinking with that Braille piece, I might go there. But um, yeah, now I'm I'm showing with Water Street Studios, and then we show kind of all over the place. Um, but because of, I guess, what I do and what I've presented, people take a liking to my work. And they come to me like you have come to me um, just out of the blue. Uh, so last year I had three exhibitions where people just approached me uh, independently um, just to see if I would exhibit with them. Um, can you talk about some of those real intricate, large pieces that you do? They look like something that should be in a field museum. They are gorgeous. Thank you. How did Thank you, you get into doing that how did you come up with the concepts do you do it by yourself or yeah you know I took a motto if I if I am I I I, I would love to have so my training early was no training and then I went to my dad's school and it was more focused on like traditional methods um uh more of the the fundamentals of art and composition color line those kind of things uh and then i went to undergrad which was a highly conceptual school uh so when i went into undergrad i was doing like rock carvings um uh, really abstract uh kind of concept less work uh, yeah yeah I, I took my first class it was called warp class um, in that class, we had to do 50 reproductions of artists' artwork in our own light. Um, so I had to interpret all of these artists, some that I had heard of, some that I had never heard of, incorporate them into my own mind, and then kind of try to make a new piece based off of that. Um, and that kind of broke and shifted my mind from this kind of freedom to more of a controlled, uh, like planned idea orientated concept based. Um, but then I realized real quickly that I have physical limitations to my own body. So um, when I was working there, I was working like 16 foot pieces, but I was in an apartment complex on the fifth floor. Yeah. That was an outdoor building, but I was like, I, I, for instance, I built a 16 foot ladder on, on the fifth floor of this apartment complex and I had to scale it out the side of the building, down the wall with ropes, making sure that the landlord and the architect was invisible and present because I was doing something pretty highly illegal because I was scaling artwork down the side of the building uh, outside of the stairwell. Um, but Wow. You know, for me, I do everything on my own. I, I, I would love to have assistance. I, I know you've seen some of the work where it's more of a, a computer generated idea based thing. Um, so I have these ideas that I could pass off to fabricators and things like that. But then for the most part, 
most of my work, all of my work right now is all made by me. So I don't have any assistance. Um, every once in a while, I ask my wife to hold something down for me or to like hold something up or put this there and that or move something over there. Um, but I have to work within my own realm. Um, so, and like, so the piece that you did, that's for example, the called yeah. Wicker Ghost. What is it? The Wicker Wicker Ghost okay. piece. Yes. Those are several pieces, right? Those are several. Yes, those are actually AI. Oh, okay. Those aren't like a real visual sculpture. Those are not a visual sculpture, but I do work in Wicker and I'm working on them. So I have ordered a, a bunch of Wicker beyond okay. what I already have. Yeah. Um, and I'm producing them. But with the process of this basket weaving is is something I've not done before other than one other piece. So it's something I'm learning um oh, wow. with all of my processes i have to go through a whole new learning process i've got this piece um, oh yeah oh wow um, um yeah kind of started my weaving aspect but that was all bent wood um so i went through the process of steaming um bending making oh, hey, molds yeah. Uh, to fit that shape and that that piece is based off of uh, like these tabasco baskets or tobacco yes. baskets or cotton baskets um as part of my long heritage within my family um so like with the wicker ghost that kind of is like a later on genre of work that i'm working towards so what type of artist do you consider yourself more like multimedia where you do would, several different genres, just the rare stuff? You're open to everything. Well, so there's this artist. Uh, one of my favorite artists is Richard Archwager. Um, He has kind of been deemed an artist that is uh, undefinable. Um, I'm a sculptor uh that's what i was yeah i'm a sculptor i'm an I, you know I, I feel in the arts there's a lot of easy ways to kind of pigeonhole yourself down into yeah, like a I category you pigeonholed. I, I mean i'm I not pigeonholed a well-known sculptor that i i interviewed i mean god he's had public sculptures all over the world but he does everything and that's why it's about you yes you allow yourself the artistic flow to come out and you go with it yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, awesome. I, there's, there's like, and I'm not, I'm not dogging on anything. Cause you know, I, I totally appreciate artists that like focus and then like see things through for me, for the most part, it's like one or two pieces maybe. And then I'm kind of like, I need to move on to another idea, another material, another thought, another theory. Um, like right now I've got it. a show. Come, what's that? I love it because you keep pushing the boundaries of 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 learning and understanding. And I laugh because that's how my career is. I have done so many different things in my lifetime. And people are like, wow, you did that too? I've always been like that. I get bored doing the same yes. thing over and over yes. and over. It has to be intellectually stimulating for me because I am an artist too. I'm trying to get back to it. I swear I'm going to get back to it. But anyway... I appreciate it. And I, that's why I was attracted to you. I was like, wow. I mean, he just, you, you're fearless. And I, I, I like that about you. Yeah. You know, and that's, it, it's, it's a lot to overcome. Um, yeah. Presenting work that you're not really necessarily comfortable with um, doing something new. You, you know, my father, you know how he works. He's kind of in the same light. Um, my grandfather, although I don't know a lot of his work, um, from what I've learned, he was kind of all over the place too. Um, life is very short. It's very long, but it's very yeah, short. Yeah, it and is. You, oh, I agree with you. Totally. We got to keep moving. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But see, I see it. This is the way I see it. I see any artist as being people with courage to take something that you like and you think is good and to just put it out there and expose yourself and be naked to the public, that yes. takes confidence. 
Yeah. So don't doubt really yourself. I mean, it takes time to develop to a, a certain concept, but you just put it out there and you go for it. And I think you get good results. And, you know, and, and you it, learn from it. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, it, you know, it's that's one of the things like I've been, I, you know, I, I feel like social media today has kind of like hurt. It, it's helped people and then it's hurt people in a lot of ways yeah. because they put stuff yeah. up and they don't get a lot of likes and then they get self-conscious yeah. about it. Yeah. I don't tend to get a whole lot of likes, but I do get a lot of feedback as far as like when people see my work, they experience my work. Actually, dad and I were just talking last night, you know, like when you're looking at a piece of art, you give it like three seconds, like the general person will give it like three seconds, five seconds, 15 seconds. Yeah. When you're talking to somebody, you get an elevator, you got 15 seconds to tell them what you do. You got to be concise. Um, when you're looking at people's artwork, you know, it, it's like you see three works and then you're like, well, I've figured them out. Oh, excuse me. I don't want people to figure me out. Like, I want you to be able to see three works and be like, Whoa. you want them to be immersed into your career. And exactly. And the experience of seeing how you got from here to there. Exactly. And I want, yeah. you know, I want, I want work to not necessarily fall. Like, I don't want to make something today and have it feel like it was made in 2024 because it was 20. I want things to be timeless. So I'm looking for ideas that, reach beyond um you know i i had this early on i called them tendencies there's a lot of tendencies within the arts you know oh, make things big uh make things bold bright um, oh, work with these this that and the I other i totally disagree with most stuff most of the stuff in the art world, I don't come from the art world. I have a totally different background, but I've always been very artistic. And I just went for things. I don't listen to other people. Most exactly. people yeah. who are extreme successful who end up running things is because they followed their mind. They didn't go with the what the what the norm says. And exactly. for social media, what I think artists have to learn to do, visual artists, is kind of like music, what the way new hip hop music musicians did you got to take over and market yourself and just own it yes and the mm -hmm. good thing about social media is that you i mean it takes time to do that but that's what you can do you don't have to depend on a gallery now to oh yes. i'm gonna pick you and i'm not gonna pick you you don't yes. need a gallery you mm -hmm. can develop your own branding you can and i i'm not i i i it's funny because i'm like that I, I everybody says you know when you see a Colin Cheryl you can kind of see a Colin Cheryl and I'm like well how do we break that like how do we make it so that you don't see my work but it's in there it's like it is branded um and I feel well, like I think that's a positive side I do it's branded through it it has a taste of you through all the different art you do though so don't feel bad about it like I have a no no close business partner who's a oh god he's a outstanding graphic designer interior designer plus he's a chef he oh. he can he brands for companies and for for individuals but you have that it factor and you need well, to exploit you. that to your advantage thank you you just need to get out there and expose yourself more and for a space of social media how you get a lot of attention is you gotta pay for unfortunately advertisement to get more likes for your stuff and stuff like that yeah but yeah i think you just need to expose yourself more and get out of your little suburban comfort zone and I, yeah, yeah 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 and chicago's oh, yeah. not necessarily the fact that you had contacts in miami which is the one of the number one places besides new york you just need to expose yourself and apply and get in other stuff yes get out there and it's it's you know because you got it I, well, I and I tend to work organically. So I actually just recently, uh, I'll show it. It's on my website. People have seen it. So I just recently oh, wow. Made this piece here. Um, it's a reproduction of a Roy Lichtenstein piece. And what I did was I put one of those 3D renderings that I do of an artificial uh, mock-up of a piece on my social media 
And within an hour, my collector had contacted me and had another collector that was interested. Um, and within the next couple of months, I'm going to be delivering this how this piece out to their house in uh, I believe it's in Long Island and it's being designed by a world renowned architect. And I they're talking about me going into architecture digest with this piece. Um, so like for me, you know, I understand where you're coming from about the marketing thing, but a lot of me is like, let's just let things organically naturally happen, you know, because yeah. I feel like the harder I try, it, well, it it's, it's, you know, it's the best. That's something that visual artists have a problem with. And I, that's something I differ from you guys. Yeah. Because with any, any skill that you have, there's a business size that you have to master. And most, yes. and, and musicians are better at that. Oh yeah. Visual artists is like, Ooh, but you got the goods. You can be creative and start to think about that. You oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not it painful to you. Exactly. Yes. And it's, it's just got to feel comfortable and natural. And that's exactly that's what it is. Exactly. And I, I think my fallacy is with more, not me feeling comfortable, uncomfortable about it, but just not trusting Instagram as much um, as a platform as more of like a money hungry platform than an art. You use it to your platform. Event. But I have to use it to my advantage. I, exactly. I, I totally agree with all the social medias, but I use them to my advantage. Yes. I pimp them. I don't let them pimp me. <laughs> I'm very comfortable of who uh -huh. I am. And I put it out there and try to exploit their system. You know, and, and, and that's how you look at it like that. Don't even yeah. get in that mindset because yeah. you're very comfortable with who you are as an artist. And that's why I wanted to, when I saw you, I was like, Wow. I knew Steve had a son, but I really didn't know much about you. I really love your father because his art is beautiful, but he's such a good person. And he's such a good person. So many phony people, because I come from a political background, I can pick him up a mile oh. away. I like Steve from day one when I first met him. He just recently talked about how we connected, and it was the universe bringing us around. But when I saw exactly. him, I was like, wow. I was like, this is like something in a museum. I have a girl. Well, thank you. I mean, that's I what we. Like that's you. what I. I just told Dad last night that he's a blue chip artist. Is just no. If I can do anything to help it get out there, I am. You got to be visible. Well, you thank got you. to. You just got to come out of your shell because that's it. Yeah. That you're putting out. You well, it's funny. Get you out that shell. Yeah, it's get you out there. You, you you say that shell i've been for like three days i'm i'm an, i'm like a nervous wreck of a kind of a guy i'm very shy um oh. i'm very quiet uh wow so like you know getting ready to do this i was i was like a kind of a nervous wreck doing this and you tell me oh, to get out of my God, shell and I, my best i'm speaking interview. to you and i feel so comfortable yeah yeah i'm actually an introverted person that does extroverted things and though that sounds <laughs> like it's a conflict i've been like that all my life um, I do things that's very visible, but I guess because my father was elected official for so many years, mm. I I hide my private life and I value it. So I yeah. understand where you're coming from. Yes. Um, but you don't have to be out there like a personality, but your art can do it for you. Exactly. <laughs> and that's that's okay. what I want. I want so I ultimately, you know, a lot of my work is based off of self-portrait work. Um and it's be like when you go to a gallery, you know, you have this opening, you get three hours with me. And then after three hours, you've got a month of no artist contact, but a bunch of artwork. Yeah. And then you get in front of that artwork. And, you know, I mean, as much as not knowing the artist doesn't it, knowing the artist doesn't really help sell the work. In today's light, knowing the artist does sell the artwork in, in, in more ways than it did before. You know, a lot of my early studies were with minimal artists. Um, a lot of these minimal artists fought the idea of biography. They didn't want anybody knowing anything about their lives. They tried to strip everything out of their work. Um, I, I started working very minimally and I said, you know, 
I got to embed myself into this. You've got to see me in the work. Somebody just recently like, told that me about myself because I'm so used to being hiding myself that I will push, be very corporate, but most people, even people have been around me, don't know anything about me. So I'm, I understand that. I, I relate yeah. to that. I'm slowly getting it out there. Well, and that's, you know, that's what... I, I got some ideas for you, Colin. We got to keep talking. Well, I we will. Ideas, um, that I think you could do to get yourself out there. I really do. Okay. Yeah. No. Let's please, please, let's talk. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. See, I'm a guy that takes advice. I ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, I know that I don't have the. I, I realized when good. I was in yeah. graduate school, I'm not the smartest guy on earth, and there's a lot smarter people out there than me. And I might as well get the knowledge from them too, because like I said, life is too That's short and I can wrap up. myself in my head That's all day. Exactly. Uh, vice versa. Because mm -hmm. that's, you know, my life is about exploration. Mm -hmm. I love exploring life. There is just, I feel like I, I wish we got to the point in society where they could download your, your brain in another body. I feel like I don't have enough time in a lifetime to do all the things I want to do. But you know what? I'm going to die trying. I'm You're going to die. Yes, yeah, exactly. So I love exploring. It. I love collaborating with intelligent people that stimulate me because that's how I learn. That's how I open up my horizons. So, well, and I think you should so please, much. please make art. I'm going to get, get back, back to an oil painter. I have to get back to it. I started oil painting when I was in high school, but I went off into whole business and all type of things I did and yeah. 364 degrees came back to this, but I'm so passionate about the arts and, and culture. I wanted to push other people first because I'm, well, that's, you know, I saw that immediately from you when, you know, when like, that's my collector is, is so passionate about the arts, but her life is, not in the arts you know it's lawyer life it's it's this other oh, thing yeah. but the yeah. passion behind the arts you know i can feel the passion that you have behind the arts you know yeah. you put you put so much time because it's, you're not getting paid for this you're not no. this is all on you you know and you're yeah. just doing it for the pure joy and to spread you know our messages whatever it may be um and to get us extra exposure because it is really hard for all yeah, of us I'm to get to out there. I'm trying to all of this, which mm -hmm. is fun to get the advertisement, to even push it further. So, but I'm going to let you go. Okay. And limit our, our, our interview. Um, thank you so much for thank sharing you. your world with Explore Art. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. If you want to do anything else ever again, and you want to feel free to call me, Oh, we're definitely By all means. Yeah, I, I got something in mind and I'm thinking about. Okay. I'm okay. here for you. So I will let you know when a magazine is coming out. Probably within the next two days, it'll be coming out. All right. Super yeah. exciting. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much. Colin, have a nice day. It was a very great pleasure. Thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.